Hey friends, Laura here with Cox Homestead and it has been a minute since I have put together a YouTube video. It has been what I call bunny season here at the homestead. And essentially that means my busiest time of year because Easter's here and everybody celebrates the Easter bunny? Anyways, I take advantage of it. It works out in my favor. Photographers come, take pictures with cute little kids and my bunnies and I go to nursing homes and schools and do all the bunny things. So bunny season is wrapping up and today I'm going to share with you some of the pros and cons of using a rabbit tractor for your grow out meat rabbits. <music> Today I'm going to share with you something that happened at our March 4th, I think it was on the 4th, meat processing workshop. We have been growing out all these rabbits. We have people coming to the farm, paying us a pretty good amount to teach them how to process rabbits. And we go to start processing these rabbits and they all have bad livers. They all had coccidiosis and we've been doing this well over a year now on pasture. We had already gone through one winter without issues. This was going through our second winter and I guess where we had a wet season, it showed up in their livers. So we went to go practice the hopper popper, which my friend Sarah gifted us for this workshop because people always want to know about that method. They want to know if we like it, what we thought. And so, okay, we've, <laughs> if we're the pros, we've got to know what we're doing. So we tried out the hopper popper on a handful of rabbits the night before the workshop. We did okay, wasn't real certain about it, but what we did notice is we had bad livers. And I said, oh my gosh, Brad, if all of these livers are bad and this is our first workshop, I'm going to be so embarrassed. Good news is you can still eat the rabbit bad news is you don't really want to eat the livers. And so the next day he practiced on the hopper popper with a few more rabbits right before people got here. And he's like, I think I got the hang of it. I think I can do this. So we taught them the hopper popper method. We also taught them bop and bleed. And we also discussed the fatal blow and the broomstick method as well. Workshop went wonderful. Thankfully, these people were very gracious with us and did not seem to condemn us for having rabbits with a coccidiosis, um, in their system and we then took those rabbit tractors and I got ammonia and sprayed them and power washed them hardcore. I spent a whole afternoon so I power washed them then ammonia sprayed them and then power washed them again and they sat in the sun and we went on all new ground this time around, ground that we've never used before, in our front yard right at Easter time so that when people are passing by for the Easter season, they can see rabbits hopping out front of our yard in their little tractors. And it was the cutest thing ever. And people loved it. People would slow down and look. And it was so fun, but it was all fresh new ground. So we are eliminating the fact that they've been on the same ground before where coccidiosis was. And I sanitized those tractors. So we're going to see if we can have success again with our rabbit tractor and it being a little bit warmer now maybe that will help what we think may have led to that because the rule when you have rabbit tractors is to not go over the same ground within six months of being on that ground before and we had done that we had followed the rules and we still ended up with coccidiosis i think the problem was that it was a really wet winter we only had like one hard freeze and it was kind of warm. It was kind of a warm winter. It was really wet and warm. It was weird weather. Whereas oftentimes when it's warm here in Tennessee, it's also dry. And so anyways, that's all we can figure out to be. So we've sanitized, moved them to the front. We'll see what happens. But number one, biggest thing that can go wrong when using the rabbit tractors is coccidiosis and exposure to other diseases, not just coccidiosis, but anything they can pick up off the ground. That's just tends to be the number one that you can. You can treat for that and there is a withdrawal period for treating for it. We did not treat for it because it was only present in the rabbits in the tractor. And how we know this is because we also did a test to see which rabbits grew out faster, rabbits from our cage and rabbits from the tractor. We did, we just did one. So is it a full test? Not completely. We will continue to test it. But we kept one rabbit in the cage and we put the rest in the tractor. We weighed them at the beginning. Uh, I'll share those weights if I can over top of this video. And then we weighed them right before processing and I'll share those pictures here. So the one in the cage 
weighed quite a bit more than the one that was on pasture, but once processed, there wasn't that huge of a difference in weight. Seems like the one in the cage carried maybe a little extra in their bladder and maybe, I don't know. I don't know why it was so much heavier. <laughs> But once processed, they were very similar in weight, which really surprised us. Um, at first, I thought it was going to be so much better that they were being raised in the cage because we were getting more meat, but it wasn't necessarily that way. All right, so on to some other pros and cons of using the rabbit tractor. Number one was the coccidiosis. Number two, potentially different grow out rates. Also, our pasture is young. We are just getting these pastures developed hopefully over time. Maybe that'll make for bigger grow outs too. Not sure, maybe. Number three is you don't have water and food with you everywhere when you're moving them through pasture like you do when they're in a central location like our barn. So we do the rabbit tractors, but we have to um, take a food bucket with us every time we move. And they're in the front yard now so we can wheel out the water hose to them and water their buckets um, from the water hose, but if they're in the back pasture, then we're carrying water buckets to water them. Not a ton of water since we just have two tractors, but it is a little bit more work than if they were just in the barn and we were filling a bucket and then filling them with our pitcher with the water source at the barn. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, in the tractor, they do get exposure to a lot different foods. So you're getting a, a fresh diet for them that's varied with different grasses and weeds or nutrient dense foods if you will um, versus when they're in the cage they typically just get pellet and hay and I do pick grass for the ones in my cages as well so but that's an extra step so if you're just comparing pure pasture to um, pure in the cages that's going to be a variant you face and so it's also fertilizing your yard which is beautiful. I don't know if you can see all this lush green grass back here behind me that we basically need a rake because when he mowed it, it left a bunch of grass there. It's grown beautifully and fast. And so that's why we moved ours to the front yard. Number one, the coccidiosis. Number two, to kind of get our front yard looking as good as our backyard so that when people drive by, they say, oh, look how green their yard is. We'll be like, yeah, that's our rabbit. So you can do some awesome fertilization in your yard or your pasture. And I'm hoping that will increase increase their uh, food grazing, what am I trying to say, their diet, even increase their diet over time with, with, with putting them on there more and some more poop coming out and more seeds coming out and um, getting a better diet for them. We have not done any overseeding on our pastures for our rabbits. I know when we visit Polyface, they had a lot of clovers and plantains and dandelions and a lot more varied in their field than we did. Uh, but I'm hoping we'll get there. I'm hoping we'll get some stuff in and maybe eventually it'll be some overseeding or maybe it'll just come in with time. We shall see. We're only about two years into the pasture raising. So we have time to uh, play with it before we know what our results are going to be from that. So you have, let's see, what do we say here? We said the risk of disease. You also have the risk of them climbing out, crawling out when they first go in. If you don't have your slats, the perfect spacing, which we have found to be about one and a half inch, I think, or one and three, one and three quarter inch spacing, maybe on those wooden slats in the bottom, they can dig out. We did lose a few this year to that. Um, eh, not these polyface rabbits haven't dug out at all, which is impressive to me, but that can happen. You could have something come along that with the dexterity to open it up and get in there, but you could also have something come along and get in your cages too, if they have good enough dexterity, but we've not had that problem. Um, and then with the watering buckets, I've noticed, especially having them in the front yard where we have trees, debris comes in there. So you might need to do something to protect that, put a lid on it or something. Um, to keep stuff from falling into your bucket. And I noticed even at Polyface, there was a lot of stuff in their water. That's just kind of comes with it, um, unless you're daily dumping it and cleaning it out, which can happen. Uh, you could do that, or you can just let some stuff be in there and clean it out once a week, which is, I'm doing it every few days, I'm dumping it, so it's not full of things clogging my, my pipeline up. Really, that's the concern, is it clogging your pipe and causing problems, so. In theory, Polyface teaches that 
Putting your rabbits on pasture can save you about 70% in feed cost. That being said, we have not done the math ourselves. I will say we fill our J feeder completely up just once a day and we put up to 10 rabbits in there. And Brad said that could have affected our growth rate of these rabbits. I think Polyface does less rabbits than that. Um, I felt fine with 10 in there because that's what we had. I need a place to put them. I think right now we have 10 in one tractor, eight in the other tractor. So maybe we'll see then, you know, just a few less if we notice a difference in their grow out weights. We should, we should compare them to see um, if there is a difference. I think it saves definitely on the feed, but then you lose the poop, which also is profit. So it just kind of cancels itself out for me. Um, right now it's still fertilizing our lawn, making our lawn look beautiful. So I'm okay with it. Um, there may be a point in time where I like the money sold in poop better than I like my lawn fertilized. We shall see. Uh, we are about to start meat chickens. So we will then run our meat chickens behind it. So they'll get to dig through some of the rabbit manure as well, which is uh, a beautiful cycle to use up their waste. And I think overall, I enjoy the rabbit tractor because I feel like the rabbits get to hop around and be more rabbit-like than in a cage for the last stint of their life. And I feel like they're digesting fresh grass that my body needs, um, which you do get grass in the pellet, but I like the fresh, I like that idea. So, and it mows our lawn for us too. <laughs> um, slower rate than the lawnmower but it still does so there is several pros and some cons to using rabbits in the rabbit tractor if you have any other pros and cons to growing your rabbits out in the tractor leave them in the comments below if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button like this video interact with me let me know you're watching this um, let me know if there's something you want me to chat about in the future this week on the homestead, I have an intern coming and we will be doing a rabbit room clean out again and planting the garden. Happy spring. We're almost to summer, folks. I don't know what that has to do with anything. But until next time, eat more rabbit. That's a good boy. Dash my honey pot. Dash my honey pot. That's a good boy. You see how I did the camera? The YouTubers need to know who you are too. This is Mr. Honey. He's my favorite kitty kitty. Oh, he loves me too. He did attack me for the first time this week. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, he's kind of famous on Instagram, aren't you? If you're not following me on Instagram, you can at Cox Homestead underscore Kodak. I'll show you lots of rat eating content. <laughs> no. Give me a minute to think here. <laughs>